Okay, the next structure of the neuron are the axon terminals. Okay, terminal just means the end of something. These are the tiny branches that um, sprout off at the end of the axon. And inside of these um, branches at the very end are these little uh, packages, so to speak, these synaptic vesicles. Okay, these tiny pouches um, or sacs, they um, contain neurotransmitters, a very important chemical in the communication process between neurons. Okay, and the reason that neurotransmitters can actually affect neurons and to tell other neurons about uh, what kinds of information uh, they're receiving is because they're able to bind to these receptor sites on the dendrites, on those branches that we talked about. Okay, so all communication, remember, begins at the dendrites, and the reason that the dendrites even have any information is because they've received neurotransmitters from other nearby neurons. Okay, now this area between neurons is called the synaptic gap. Now, it's very interesting for a long time before anybody was able to really examine or look at individual uh, nervous system tissue, uh, there was this idea that the nervous system, all the neurons, all the cells are actually physically directly linked up to one another. Um, but when we were able to finally um, examine uh, tissue underneath a microscope, an electron microscope, we scientists observed that uh, neurons actually do not directly touch one another. There is ever so tiny of a gap between them. And so the thing is, in order for these neurons to be able to actually then communicate with one another, they have to use some kind of chemical communicator that can cross this gap and go to another neuron. Okay, so this is the synaptic gap. Now, the sending end of a neuron, okay, or this axon terminal, plus the gap plus the receiving end of another neuron, this whole thing, these three parts together, make up what we call the synapse, okay? And your textbook actually does have an error in that it refers to the synapse as this gap between the neurons, but that is actually not the case. The synapse is all of these structures taken together, and this is why we call communication between neurons synaptic communication. Okay, because it, it does involve all of these structures, not just the gap. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about how it is that neurons are able to communicate. Um, and so this part of the lecture, I really want everyone to just try and bear with me. This is very, very technical information, and I will do my best to explain how this process actually works. And it is very important um, in understanding how it is that drugs are able to affect our body, for example. Um, but as I said, it is very technical. The term I definitely want everyone to know is action potential. Okay, an action potential is a brief electrical impulse by which information is transmitted along the axon of a neuron. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that the brain only really understands information in two forms. It only understands information that is electrical or chemical, okay, in the case of neurotransmitters. And so for those of you who have some idea about sleep laboratories or if you've been looking ahead to the consciousness chapter, your brain actually emits um, its own electrical activity. Okay, so your brain actually has an electrical charge to it. Um, if anybody's curious, that charge is roughly around negative 70 millivolts. Okay. And so, yes, there's actually electricity in your brain, but the interesting question is, how is that electricity generated? And so, um, for just in case anybody doesn't really understand uh, certain properties or principles of electricity, and I myself am very limited in my understanding, that if you want to generate an electrical impulse, okay, you want to generate some electricity, really what you have to do is you have to find a way to move particles or you know certain substances in the air around okay now 
inside of your brain I mentioned that your brain is suspended in cerebrospinal fluid okay and this this coats throughout your entire brain now within the cerebrospinal fluid we find a number of charged particles okay and if anybody remembers chemistry a charged particle is an ion now ions these charged particles they can have either negative or positive charges and so you have uh, negatively charged sodium ions in your CSF you have positively charged potassium ions both inside of your neuron and both outside okay and so in order for an electrical signal to actually be generated in your neurons is they have to very very quickly very rapidly exchange these ions and the way what happens when a neuron exchanges ions is the the bumping into of all those negatively and positively charged ions will generate electricity okay and so that's how electricity is generated in your brain now what triggers this ionic change the sudden rapid exchange of sodium and potassium ions is really stimulation from the environment when for example I wake up in the morning and I look outside and it's a bright sunny day and I'm receiving all of this visual information from my environment that excites the sensory receptors in my eyes and which causes and triggers them to open up certain little channels in the axon okay now when those channels open um, and I won't go into a lot of the technical details because nobody will be expected to know specifically okay more are there more sodium ions outside of the neuron at rest than inside etc I'm not expecting anybody to understand or know that information off the top of their heads but what I want you to understand is that when a neuron is excited and it receives stimulation these channels open up and there is this rapid exchange between positive and negatively charged ions and this is what generates that electrical impulse okay and that electrical impulse will be sent down the entire length of the axon um, in order to proceed to the next phase of communication chemical communication okay so a few more things about action potentials um, looking at this graph as I mentioned a little bit earlier your brain actually has a slight negative electrical charge to it and when your brain when a neuron is at rest it is not receiving any information and it's not communicating which is very very rare they're almost always communicating when the neuron is at rest it has a resting potential of negative 70 millivolts but when it receives excitation or stimulation from the environment okay what happens is those channels start to slowly open up and more positively charged ions come in and this brings up the electrical charge of that neuron and so what happens here is when a neuron receives just enough excitation to push it up to it into the negative 55 to negative 50 millivolt range we say that that neuron has achieved stimulus threshold meaning at this point once you cross this threshold you will have an action potential that neuron will fire it will communicate with other neurons and we call this the all or none law because if you cross stimulus threshold that neuron is going to fire there's nothing you can do to stop it and just some other interesting facts um, and just to help you understand some of the terminology when we say that the neuron is uh, resting we say the neuron is polarized and what this means is that the charge of the neuron is different than the charge of the fluid outside of the neuron that's all it means but again you're not expected to know that for the exam and when a neuron actually fires when it's actually experiencing an action potential it changes its charge it gets all the way up here to positive 30 millivolts um, so we say that it depolarizes during an action potential some other characteristics of action potentials is that they are self-sustaining so once they're generated they actually regenerate the signal down the length of the axon um, and so a, a way I could kind of illustrate this is you know with an action potential once once it's actually occurring um, it doesn't fire at any different strength or intensity depending on how much stimulation it's received it's kind of like a light switch once I 
move that light switch once I if I very carefully press it up to where I turn the light on. Once I cross that threshold, the light's coming on. The light comes on at the same rate every single time. It doesn't matter if I very slowly tip the switch up or if I um, madly try to flip the switch up. The light comes on at the same rate. Okay, and action potentials, they are self-sustaining and they regenerate themselves along down the axon at the same rate. And then finally, another characteristic of action potentials is that after a neuron has fired and has communicated, it, there's a brief period in which it can no longer communicate. Um, we call this the refractory period. It lasts for about a thousandth of a second or even less. Um, but basically the neuron is returning back to its resting state which prepares it to fire again and communicate with other neurons.